Hello, hi, welcome back to the podcast, another episode. Uh, We are in a disclosed location, me and my special guest, Lauren Moran. That's me, that's me, that's me. That's you. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited too. We just watched the Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble is like one of the best wrestling days of the year. One of my favorite wrestling days of the year. I think it is my favorite wrestling day of the year. I think it's better than WrestleMania. I agree. I gotta concur. Concur means agree, right? Uh, concur means, I think. <laughs> I think so. We're recording this. It's 1.30 a.m. We just finished watching the Royal Rumble. This is your review. Um, enjoy it, because <laughs> it's late. <laughs> We just got through a five hour show and then we watched the press conference. So it didn't feel like five hours. I mean, the Royal Rumbles always feel like they go pretty quickly, even though they are an hour. The Ray Wyatt match kind of felt a little long because it was in the dark. But yeah, (laughs) it does. No, it does. (laughs) Because you're having fun watching it. I'm watching the whole thing. Everything was fun. Yeah. Everything was a good time. Yeah, it is. By the way, uh, we are recording with one mic, so Mm -hmm. enjoy the chaos of this audio. But this is what this episode is going to be. So (laughs) we're going to, it's me and Lauren. It's my best friend. So yeah, we're going to have fun. Yeah, we're going to have fun. All right. Let's review the rumble. All right. So we opened up the show with the men. Royal Rumble. Yes, that was surprising, but also exciting. I think it was a fun way to start. Because didn't the women kick it off last year? Yes, they did. Yeah, cool. So it was nice that the men kicked it off this year. Yeah, I also liked it. And when it happened, my jaw was to the floor. Yeah. Yeah. You were pretty, you were pretty, you were pretty stunned. It was fun. (laughs) I was, because I thought the ending was supposed to be Cody. Coming back, winning the Royal Rumble. I thought they were going to end off the Rumble with that. So I did not expect the first match to be uh, the Men's Royal Rumble. But then I got hyped because I thought the women would main event. However, the bloodline has been amazing. That was the main event. We'll get to all that (sighs) cinematic yeah, that would have been a weird note to go from that into a rumble. Like, yeah, everybody, everybody's not happy right now. We're all not okay. Let's not watch a rumble after seeing that. We all went through an emotional <laughs> roller coaster, and, and then, to, hey, here's the women's royal we rumble. Have to unlock Kevin Owens from the fucking <laughs> handcuffs in the ring, and then drag his body out, and then present the women like. Like, that's not, that's understandable. Oh, man. Yeah, understood. So we open up with the men's. Gunther is number one. Number one, and he holds strong. That man is scary. That's a scary guy right there. He's so tall. Oh, my God. He chopped so many people. (laughs) They all sounded like they hurt a lot. I think it did hurt a lot. Yeah. There were a lot of bruises on him, on him especially. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. He yeah. broke the record. He is uh he broke Rey Mysterio's record with the longest time in a Royal Rumble. That's fucking cool. Good for, I mean, that stinks cuz we all love Rey Mysterio, but that's a cool thing to have seen to see we saw some some new things happen a few times tonight. So that's pretty fun. Well, Dominic Mysterio doesn't really love Ray Mysterio. He's such a little shit. He's <laughs> such a little shit. Wait, can we also talk about how exciting it was to see Pat McAfee back? McAfee? <laughs> Pat McAfee! McAfee. I'm going to pronounce a lot of people's names wrong because I don't read words well so. listen y'all she draws the superstars I went to art school please forgive me <laughs> man it's okay 
Anyway. You draw him well. You draw him well. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, it was really cool to see him, and I loved how he was going off like, what'd you do? What'd you let this kid? Nobody kept an eye on this kid while I was gone. I love that. I really appreciate Michael Cole's reaction as well. So to Mac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looked genuinely shocked, mm -hmm. and he said, like, I just FaceTimed you today. Why did anyone tell me? Oh, my God. It was pure. It was precious. He got... He got his boy back, his best friend, and they did not skip a beat on commentary. I could do without Corey Graves. I'm sorry. Uh, you do very well on Monday Night Raw, but man. I would have just loved to have Cole and Pat go back and forth the whole time because they just have such positive energy. That's what I want. That's what I want. You know, that's what I want. And Michael Cole works really well with pat like yeah. they are a great duo because michael cole is phenomenal on commentary mm -hmm. yeah. we should start giving that man his flowers he's, good. he's a good guy he's he does he does good job saying the words. <laughs> he does a good job <laughs> saying the words exactly <laughs> exactly all right and then <laughs> back to the royal rumble yes. uh seamus comes out in number two and it's a it's a meat slapping hoss fight. It's a big beefy European boy bonanza. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. They're slapping, they're tossing each other, they're having so much fun. <laughs> they're just having a blast. Having a blast, a blast in a glass. <laughs> Just guys being dudes. <laughs> guys being dudes slapping each other around in the middle of 50,000 people. <laughs> These Europeans came all the way to Texas to slap chests. <laughs> what a beautiful thing. In San Antonio. In, San Antonio. in the Alamo Dome. I think it was the Alamo Dome. I hope it is. Um, and someone will tweet at me and yell at me about it. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> there were some pretty good moments in the Rumble. Um, we got Miz coming out, Kofi Kingston, Johnny Gargano. Um, also... Was Kofi Kingston actually eliminated? He wasn't supposed to be eliminated, but his foot was on the chair, wasn't it? I don't remember. The last thing I remember seeing of him was him being on the ground, but also being on the chair and one foot in the air. And that was that's the last thing I remember seeing, which made me sad because I wanted I wanted more new in the rumble. <laughs> they got eliminated so soon. It bummed me out. But I don't know. I don't know what happened to Kofi. Yeah, we don't know what happened to Kofi, but mm. that's okay. Two years in a row. It's fine. We still love Kofi. Yeah. Listen, give him another title shot. Whoever takes it after Mania, just just give him, give him a chance. Give him a chance. Exactly. Give him a chance. Johnny Gargano came out and he wore Kang the Conqueror gear. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. He was one of the many wearing... A, a hint or a pop of lime green tonight he was like the first of benny but it was so cool i love the lines and the gear and everything he always has some kind of some kind of something like that one of them marvel gears tonight was a fun one i liked it they're usually hit or miss for me but this one was fun i like those colors i really think marvel should start sponsoring johnny gargano because he really reminds me what which movie is coming out soon mm -hmm. with his gear Yep, yep, absolutely. That's a great point. That's a great point. Dude, we got fucking tickets for that. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah! Quantumania! Yeah. Can't wait. Um, yeah, you know, the Rumble was good. Okay, so, yes. I'm looking at my notes. Brock Lesnar oh my God. coming out. <laughs> that was wild. <laughs> coming out at number 12. Oh my god bork i cannot believe what did you call him you called him bork i cannot believe that bork showed up he came he threw some people off i was sad only about one of the guys that he threw out of the ring but man he <laughs> i thought he was gonna destroy everybody and i thought he was gonna be in there for so long but no bobby lashley saved the day he came out and he said fuck that big boy i'm gonna get him out of here 
And then he did. And then, oh my God, the even better thing, the even better thing was that stupid idiot coming out and then Bork being like, no, I'm mad. I'm going to fuck this dumb idiot up. And then he fucks the dumb idiot up. And when the dumb idiot goes into the ring, he's in, he's gone like that. He's just not, he barely even gets a chance to do anything. By the way, she's talking about Baron Corbin, who is the dumb idiot. I don't like that guy. He's stupid. I don't like him. I don't want to explain why. I don't have to. Just look at him. But I loved seeing him just, like, get the shit beat out of him and then get thrown into the ring and get thrown out. That was really nice. Seth Rollins eliminated him. Good. Beautiful. Good. I love it. I also loved the color of Seth's gear tonight. It was nice. It was very nice, actually. I liked his gear. Yeah, Seth Rollins came out. Um, And then Rey Mysterio was supposed to come out. Well, Seth Rollins came out. Otis came out. Otis, I don't know what happened to him. He got lost. It's okay. A few other people got lost. Um, New New Day's gear, though. It was cool. I didn't know what it was. I have to look up that at. Yeah, it was an at. But I like the colors. It looked good. Yeah. It looked like um, this kind of soda from the UK. It's like an orange soda. It's like IR something. That sounds delicious. I don't know what the name of it is. <laughs> I don't know what the name of it is. It's okay. Um, <laughs> Ray Mysterio came out, but then he didn't come out. And then the next entrant was his son, Dominic Mysterio and he came out with Rey Mysterio's mask on and Lauren has deep feelings about this it's just so stupid he's just a dumb little idiot how did he last so long in the Royal Rumble (laughs) why didn't anybody literally anybody just pick him up and throw him over the ropes how can you disrespect your father like that that's so mean that's so mean didn't get your dad probably wanted to come in do some do some 619s and kick some people in the head and you didn't get a chance to because you had to be a big bully to your dad who bullies their dad a little idiot that's who <laughs> okay so then the next entrant was elias <laughs> Then Finn Balor came out, and the Judgment Day was there, supreme. Their presence was felt in the Royal Rumble. Finn Balor came out, and then... Oh, yeah. Did Edge come out? He came out after. No, he came out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's late. Booker T came out. It was a great surprise. Um, it was solid. He did a spin and rooney. I loved it. I wish he got to stay a little bit longer. It sucks he got eliminated so quick. He got eliminated by Seamus. So, Seamus, what a shame. Edge came out. Uh, did that was fun. Come out by now. Did what was that? Swordman come out by now? Oh yeah, Drew McIntyre came out. Because him and Seamus were just like this. They were like freaking frack as soon as he came out. They were like, we're going to do this together, bud. Like, they were helping each other out the whole time. There was so much happening in the Royal Rumble. Yeah. It was great. Chris Angel got eliminated, too, right? They all got eliminated around the same time. Edge came out, mm-hmm. and he eliminated Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Then Dominic... No, 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 no. Finn Balor eliminated Edge because Edge was trying to eliminate Dominic Mysterio. And that's how Dominic Mysterio lasted long (laughs) in the Royal Rumble. Stupid. Stupid, stupid. But luckily, um, we got to see uh, Beth Phoenix for a little while because of all this happening. Yes, because... They were fighting towards the back, and Rhea Ripley came out, but then we saw Beth Phoenix, and she said, get your hands off my man, but she looked mean and vicious, as she should. She should have came out to the Royal Rumble, but she did not. Spoiler alert. It's okay. But that was a fun moment. Um, At least we got to see her. At least we got to see her. You know, at least we got to see a little bit of her, and she got to do a nice little... She speared Rhea Ripley, right? 
I think she speared Rhea Ripley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She looked jack. Yeah, she yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. She looked real big in in a in a real nice way. It was great. She looked awesome. Yeah. 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 Buddy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Austin Theory came out, Omos came out, and then Braun Strowman came out, and that was a fun tall tall man, tall man. Big fight. Boy fight, big boy fight, mm-hmm. big. <laughs> if you can see Lauren, <laughs> put one hand all the way up for Braun Strowman, and then the other hand just slightly higher. Even what's fucked up is I'm. <laughs> what's fucked up is even if I stood on my tiptoes with my arms stretched up, that would still not be as tall as either of them. They're both very tall men. They're both very tall. There was a picture on Twitter of Denise Salcedo standing next to Omas while she was interviewing him. And the size difference is uncanny. It's amazing to see. (laughs) Yeah, it's pretty incredible. It's pretty incredible. She could stand on her own shoulders and still not be as tall as him. (laughs) It's true. (laughs) That was such a cute picture. I mean, when we saw him at Comic-Con, when he came over to the table, he was... You could, could, if you copy and pasted you and put you on your own shoulders, you would still, like, be looking up to him a little bit. (laughs) He's a... He is 12 feet tall. He's 14 feet tall. Logan Paul coming out. No, absolutely not. What a fucking joke. I'm sorry. I... I... (laughs) This is probably... I'm so fucking mad about this. First of all, the fact that he's even here. Fuck it to the goddamn moon. Second of all, you're we- you're wearing the same gear that you wore to WrestleMania? You fucking clown. You literally brag about the Pokemon card you wore around your neck and how expensive it is, but you couldn't be bothered to buy new gear for the Royal Rumble? For the you are the worst person. You are the. W- There's so many reasons why this kid is a shithead, but you literally couldn't be bothered to get new gear for the Royal Rumble. Yeah, it was. The appearance was dusty just because of that alone. Like he has, he could have gotten new gear. Like maybe a. A little bit more of a bedazzled yellow with the black if you still want to do that like maybe like a black and white kind of number like you couldn't switch it up you were wearing the same like that's an you were outfit repeating how disgusting listen it's usually not disgusting in real life but in wrestling I feel like it's sacred because it's such pageantry. Exactly. And here's the thing. It's okay to re-wear your WrestleMania gear at the Raw or for any event afterwards. Like, wear it at live shows. Wear it at different things. But not for the best fucking pay-per-view of the year. Like, it is one step below WrestleMania as far as, like prestige like people die to be in the royal rumble not die people don't die people are dying to be in the royal not people really want to be in the royal rumble it's their major goal and since you are logan paul and you handed everything which is you know it's okay that's the way you live man but we're not doing shoot and boot for this episode but that is an ultimate boot ultimate boot because like agreed You can wear your WrestleMania gear, the Monday after Mania, Royal Rumble gear, like Seth Rollins, Johnny Gargano. He can wear that King the Conqueror gear on Monday Night Raw, you know, this Monday. But you're wearing your WrestleMania gear a year later for a pay-per-view where you are on the road to wrestlemania and we're about to be in hollywood and you come dressed like this it's so so, 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 so. that's what it is think about how many new costumes the miz has had since wrestlemania literally like this is the same exact costume that miz has that miz wore literally like 50 different costumes ago 
<laughs> it's only been, it's been like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you, oh, what a fucking asshole. That guy's a fucking asshole. I fucking hate him. <laughs> Listen, the only good thing that he brought to the Royal Rumble was that spot with Ricochet, though. I mean, at what cost? <laughs> like, really? It's like, it was it really worth having Logan Paul here? I don't think so. I don't think Ricochet fucking colliding with a, a YouTube asshole in the middle of the ring just so he can be eliminated immediately after that is like... I would have loved to see that spot better with someone like Xavier Woods yeah. and Ricochet doing that spot. Like, I feel like... That yeah, it's Logan Paul. It's whatever. The, like, thud between the two like the impact was a choice to hear (laughs) like it was like full-on collision it was a good spot but you know i wish i fucking wish that i would have rather have johnny knoxville done that spot imagine johnny knoxville doing that that would have been if you want to have a fucking celebrity god damn it bring out johnny knoxville i wish fluffy could have come out (laughs) there's so many other people so many that could have been shinsuke we could have had shinsuke in the rumble instead of fucking paul we could have had big e at the rumble he might not have been ready that might be why we haven't we didn't see him that's probably true yeah he had a really fucking crazy ass injury you know I think he, uh, if he's not ready, that's okay. That's okay. We it still love him. Gr- I mean, God, I would have fucking cried tears of joy if he showed up, but he's on the, he's on the healing process. He's on the up and up. It was good. Yeah. 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 And then Cody Rhodes came out. He did. He came out at number 30. The boy... This whole entire Royal Rumble has been surrounded around, came out at number 30. I wish he came out a little earlier. I wish he came out at number 27, just because that number in the Royal Rumble is so legendary, legendary because most of, I forget how many winners, but that's a spicy number to get because it's a lot of winners have uh, gone on to WrestleMania with that spot number. So I would have loved that. And then he wouldn't, the, he, I wanted to see him longer in the match and really fight for his spot at WrestleMania. But he had a really great time. He had a stupendous time. His chest was swelling up. I got so scared about it. <laughs> I got so scared about it. His uh, showdown between him and Seth Rollins was fun. Mm-hmm. That was great. I I honestly that him versus Gunther at the end, just like the chops, dude, the fucking chops on his freshly healed peck. Mm-hmm. My God, it like oh, oh, and you know that he's just been warming up all night, so he's like, I know how to get the most fucked up sound on somebody's <laughs> chest at this point. So oh, it was great. It was a really good really fun ending and i'm glad that they were able to have like a decent kind of match length at the very end you know it was cool it was a good it was a nice ending and they got to point at the sign it was beautiful and there were fireworks we love fireworks we love fireworks we do love fireworks it was great yeah uh you were saying when we were watching it that uh that was a good person for cody to go back and forth with and he was number one too so like it was a good story at the end where like Gunther was broke the record he was the longest in the Royal Rumble and Cody comes out and he's fresh in and you know the the cards were in the stars with Stardust's alter ego Cody Rhodes Man, okay, listen, he goes on to win WrestleMania, sure, why not? I'm just saying, one of these Royal Rumbles, he needs to pull a Mick Foley and come out as Stardust 
and then somehow wash all that makeup off and then come out as the American nightmare Cody Rhodes. I need to see it in my lifetime. Yes, that would be so fucking fun. I would love to see that. I did. I also loved the ode to gold dust he did. I like that he did Shattered Dreams. That was really, really cool. I love that so much. I love that he always does like little tributes to his family or his past in some way. The same way that he did like um before he pointed the sign, how he did like the too sweet and like the the kapoo thing and then he pointed the sign. It was like he just does little tributes to things along the way and it's a very nice thing that I like about Cody Rhodes. Yeah, he did a really good job. He did a good job. You did a good job, Cody. Good job. Yeah, I really like that spot um, towards the end when Gunther had Cody in a headlock Mm -hmm. and Cody was starting to fade, but Cody was also like bringing Gunther over the rope. So it looked like Cody was going to pass out, but also like eliminate Gunther. So that was a great story. Like, that's what Cody Rhodes does, too. He tells a really, really great story in the ring, no matter who his opponent is, no matter the stipulation, no matter, like, whatever is happening in the ring, he tells a really great story about his passion in the ring and his heart in the ring because of how, you know his family's legacy and how far it goes back. So, and even in the press conference, he was really like opening up about his family and like crying as Cody does. But that's just, you know, he came back at WrestleMania with that good promo, the raw after WrestleMania. So talking about how it's in his legacy to win the Mecca of the WWE championship. And He won. So that's a really great story to tell once this bloodline Sami Zayn stuff wraps up. And then maybe at WrestleMania, it could be family legacy versus family legacy, which is the bloodline and Cody Rhodes. It's a great, fun story to tell. Maybe at WrestleMania. Who knows? Yep. Hell yeah. It'll be exciting. It'll be really exciting. I can't wait. I can't wait to see to see what they have in store. Because it really feels so like, I don't know, at this point, especially with the way that it ended, it feels like anything can really happen at this point. There's no there's no which way to see which way things are going to go. Although I did realize that Elimination Chamber is the next thing. And I wonder if this is fast forwarding to the last match. But what if Elimination Chamber is going to be all of the bloodline like Roman and the, and the three and the three Usos and then Sammy be crazy. Sussex, they need one more. Paul Hammond. (laughs) (laughs) It should be Paul Hammond. Oh, man, it should be. (laughs) Sorry to, like, jump to that, but it just came. No, it was good. Um, Um, So for this match, the Men's Royal Rumble, what would you give it out of 10? I would say... Um, maybe I do like a 7.5 out of 10. My favorite guy wasn't in it. Chinsuke wasn't in it. So that automatically loses a point for me. Um, I, and also like it kind of loses a little bit of shine for me because it was so predictable. Everybody was kind of assuming that Cody was going to be there. And honestly, Logan Paul puts that much of a damper on it for me. Like him being involved in something. Um, so that's why I'd say it's about a 7.5 for me. It was a really fun time. I enjoyed watching it. I would watch it again if somebody wanted to watch it or hadn't seen it. And yeah. What about you? What would you give it? I would give it a 7 out of 10 because, one, there were no surprise entrants. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Rey Mysterio was a good pop, and I think a lot of people were excited, but he never showed up. Um... Overall, it was, I mean, Brock Lesnar was kind of, uh, no, he wasn't really a surprise because he showed up at Monday Night Raw, but it was a surprise that Bobby Lashley eliminated him. That's for sure. Um, yeah. 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 That was a surprise. That was a good, that was a yeah. good surprise. Um, that's really the thing that I got the most excited for about this match. And then Cody Rhodes 
Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like they should have just left Cody as a surprise. Like, hype up the Royal Rumble. Cody is obviously going to come back. Let him be, let him have that, like, John Cena moment at 2008 Royal Rumble when he came back in number 30. Like, he's, we know that he's going to come out. It's predictable, but you don't have to ruin the surprise, you know? Um, but that's how I felt about it. I would give it a 7 out of 10. It was fun. Um, next is the... Mountain Dew, Pitch Black, Bray Wyatt versus LA Knight. Um, Bray Wyatt comes out and his entrance was fun. The Fireflies came out in the crowd. So that was nice to see again. Um, But it was his first match back. And he looked spooky. He looked extra spooky. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I like the black lights. I like that he looked like a snake. <laughs> he turned into a snake. He said, I'm a snake. I'm a snake. That was the Bray Wyatt energy. And I liked it. Did he have little fangs too? Yeah. He was a snake. He had little fangs and red contacts. Um, if L.A. Knight came out, I did not catch his entrance at all. But when Bray Wyatt came out and made his way to the ring, he was somehow there. And the match started. And they turned on the, yeah. like, what is it? The black lights? Purple lights? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They turned on the black lights. And it straight up looked like that f- scene from Batman Forever where Chris O'Donnell, Robin, just takes a joy ride through Gotham City. And he... He lands somewhere he's not supposed to be in an alleyway with uh, what? Who? Whose gang was it? I don't think it's anybody's gang. I think it was just a gang yeah. in Gotham City. Mm-hmm. Those neon lights. Yeah, that's a fun scene. It was fucking rad. Yeah, I agree. That's exactly what it reminded me of too. I did think the fuck the uh the neon ropes was a cool effect. I really like that. I don't know what that green stuff was. I thought it was popcorn. I thought, like, maybe Michael Cole had a snack of popcorn on the desk. And then when Bray Wyatt, like, moved the table, he knocked the popcorn off. Do you remember that? Do you remember all that green stuff? I think it was popcorn. Because there, po- there was popcorn on their, um, was it the Royal Rumble? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was popcorn already on their uh, tables. So I think it was popcorn during that match. Um yeah, the visual on his face, like when they turned on the black lights, that was extra spooky. I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was a fun match. I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect for that match, and it was a fun match to experience. Um, it was very heavily sponsored. The Mountain Dew logo was in the middle of the ring. That's that's fun. It sure was. It sure was, and then it was um, an ending with a spooky, um, with a spooky Baba Duke black phone man named Uncle what? Howdy. Uncle Howdy. At first, I thought he did a swanton bomb off the ledge where he was. I think he tripped. I think he just tripped and fell. <laughs> he probably did trip and fall, but Bray Wyatt won the match. Uh, and then the puppets. There was a projection of the puppets from the Firefly Funhouse behind Bray Wyatt. So, was it a projection or were they there? I thought they were there. I thought they were like looming over where the Uncle Man fell from. Like they were up there where the where the um, where the Babadook was. And when the Babadook fell, they like looked over from where the Babadook fell. <laughs> what would you rate that match? I would rate it a five out of ten. It was fun. Um, I like the visuals. That was a lot of fun. But yeah. Yeah. You said it, sister. You got it, dude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> next is Bianca Belair versus Alexa Bliss. Um, Bianca Belair is in her John Cena era mm-hmm. where she's going to have a long reign. She's going to have, you know, pretty good matches. She's going to shine brighter than whoever is against her because that's how much of a mega star she is. And. Alexa Bliss, I thought there was going to be more happening since we got the pitch black match. Uncle Howdy came out somehow, um, did something, jumped off. Don't know if he's okay. 
But I thought something was going to happen with Alexa Bliss during that match. I mean, they teased something towards the end of that, like at the end of that match. But I thought it would play out at the Royal Rumble. It did not. But Bianca Belair, uh, yeah, like I said, she's in her John Cena era. The show is Bianca Belair. You see her wrestle. She's fantastic. She's always going to put on a great match because she's that good. And she's a superstar. So she won. What do you think? Yeah, I loved it. I love that they beat the shit out of each other. Like, they did not hold back. It was a pretty, it was a good length, too. And I really loved about their gear, how, like, their hair kind of mimicked the other person's outfit. Like, Bianca had pink and, um, like, gold or pink and silver gear and alexa had like black with bedazzled all over it and it was cool that like they kind of matched each other in a way and i loved that i'm sure they coordinated that because they just i think they both have big brains like that and yeah it was fun it was really fun i love watching them beat each other up it was good and i don't know what that video was at the end i thought we were gonna get some royal rumble stuff too but nope she just saw a video and she was like all right (laughs) uncle howdy i guess Whatever, man. And that was that. And that was that. in the press conference, Bray Wyatt came out and he was asked about Alexa Bliss. And he said that him and Alexa Bliss will always have a connection with each other. And that was really it. Um, don't know where the Alexa Bliss is heading to. I thought that maybe it was a sign that she was probably going to show up at the Royal Rumble as some dark entity. But we did get that. We'll get to that soon. Yeah the yeah. other the other dark entity who entered yeah. the royal rumble we'll get to that yeah. soon bianca won flips bianca did too this one when she did that one segment where she like did a flip off the turnbuckle and then she did a fucking another flip and, oh my god she's just so good i just can't uh she's great i love her so much i hope she never lose i hope she beats roman's championship record i said what i said <laughs> <laughs> You did. I'm proud of you for letting that out of your, uh, yeah. Let letting it, it out. Um, I would give this match a seven out of 10. It was great. It was a good match. Um, it was a fun match. It was a fun Bianca Belair match. I give it a seven out of eight because I wanted something more to happen with Alexa Bliss. I think Alexa Bliss is, uh, a good opponent for Bianca Belair, especially Alexa B- Bliss being a multi-time champion, but Bianca did what she had to do. So it's a 7 out of 10 for me. What about you? Yeah, I think so too. I think it was an 8 for me just because they both were pretty much like, I don't know, there were times where I thought that Alexa might have had her and it had me at the edge of my seat a few times. I loved how much they had like, I don't know, good good kick out moments and stuff. Yeah, I say it's an 8. If somebody asked me if they should watch it, I would say yes. Yeah, I would say yes too. You should watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. Okay, next is the Women's Royal Rumble. We started number one, Rhea Ripley. Number two, Liv Morgan. Wow. This was this was some controversial because they were tag team partners once upon a time ago. It was a year ago. Were they tag team champions? I don't think they were tag team champions. Okay. Let's look it up. Okay. Let me let me go to the let me check the tape. Let's, go, let's check the tape. Let's check okay. the tape. Oh no, Rhea held the tag team title with Nikki as superhero. That's when she was a tag title winner. Nikki Ash. Ash. Nikki Ash. Nikki Ash. So then Dana Brooke came out, Emma came out, Shayna Baszler came out. Solid group to come back in Shayna Baszler had some Warhammer gear I thought it was really cute I loved Dana Brooks Barbie gear yes. that was cute oh my god it was so cute I love that pink color her sneakers were so cute I love the bedazzle all over and she was fucking whooping ass too she was doing all sorts of flips I love when Dana Brooke is allowed to shine because she can really she's super athletic I like watching her wrestle she's rad Yeah, she can go. Liv Morgan's gear was also cute. I got to give it a shout out with the yellow gear and the pink and yellow. That was fun. That was fun for her. Bailey came out and Bailey looked like she was wearing a Green Ranger gear. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely had Green Ranger energy to it. It was fucking cool. I love the pants, too. I like how baggy they were. They looked like uh, they were fun. They were fun pants. 
They were fun <laughs> pants. I liked when Bailey came out and she was avoiding the crowd and people were like reaching to like, you know, high five her or whatever. And she took the sign and she ripped up the signs and she was just teasing the crowd. Bailey is a great heel. And I wish that she and damage control were pushed a little more because they feel slightly mid card ish. And that's fine. You know, like there should be a mid card in the women's division. That's how we get more matches, you know, more women's matches. But I wish that she would have lasted a little longer in the Royal Rumble. But. She was great. She was really dominant with damage control when EO Sky and Dakota Kai came out. So that was fun for them to have that moment where they were just completely dominant. And there was a, um, we'll get to it, but BFAB came out from Hit Row. That was fun. She was eliminated too quickly. She came out and fucking kicked some people in the face. And then was it Shayna Baszler that eliminated her? It was Ray Ripley. Ray Ripley. Roxana Perez came out. NXT champion. Oh so God. you did not know Roxana going into this. And I told you that uh, she did appear in an episode of Total Divas where she was a fan and she was waiting outside of the arena. And she asked Natty how she can become a diva. And now she is thriving in WWE and NXT. And I told you that. And then you saw her. So what do you think of her now? Oh, my God. I It made me want to get back into NXT again because she has such sick energy and she's so fast and fun in the ring. And you can just see, like, how fucking excited she is to be there and how uh, she just has so much spunk and she's wonderful. And I want to I'm excited to see more from her. And I love that she's NXT champion, too. She's like this big. She's so great. She's fun. I really enjoyed her. I enjoyed her, too. She was fun. She was a lot of fun in the ring. But then Dakota Kai and EO Sky came through and they eliminated Roxana. They eliminated Dana Brooke. Yeah, like I said before, they were running house. They were very dominant. Natalia came out. They eliminated Natalia. Um, they were doing like top tier heel work in this fucking rumble. Like the three of them were, oh my God, they were fucking killing it this whole time. I loved watching the way that they would just like pinpoint people and mm, it was good. It was good shit. And the way that they would come to save each other too. It was so cute. Like you could genuinely see how like worried they were when they saw one of the other ones like getting beat up or something. It was great. There was a moment, so the next person was Candice LeRae, and there was a moment where Dakota Kai and EO Sky were already over the top rope, and they were by, by a turnbuckle. EO Sky is in the right, Dakota Kai was in the left, or vice versa. But Candice LeRae throws Bailey to the turnbuckle, and that's when EO Sky and Dakota Kai were slipping off the apron. So they were both like hanging on to the rope and Bailey was like helping them out and they got back. Like that was a fun moment between damage control and like the other like Candice LeRae, because it was like, it was fun to see. They were, like you said, there were little moments with damage control, like where they were working so well together, but then there were like little moments where they were slipping up and it seemed like, Maybe they were going to turn on each other, but they didn't. So that's, mm -hmm. I like that damage control were just running house in the Royal Rumble. Yep. That was fun. Zoe Stark came out from NXT and I'm familiar with her because of her spots that show up on Twitter. She was, she was a lot of fun to watch in the Royal Rumble. Yeah, she was fucking sick. She, she was pretty beastly. She reminded me of a young Rhea Ripley too. The way that she just came in and kind of dominated immediately. She's got big arm muscles too. She's real strong. She is real strong. She does look like Rhea Ripley uh, when she had her soccer gimmick mm -hmm. in the May Young Classics. Remember that? Yeah. 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 The, gear color was, the gear color was even the same. It was funny. It was cool. It was funny. Xia Lee came out. Xia Lee looked cool. Yep. I wish she used her weapon. Why not? Why Why is that a thing in the Royal Rumble? There's no disqualifications. Why, why can't she use that? Thing for the referee to do very rude for him to take away her weapon she should have used it she probably could have won if she used her 3xl um kendo stick i think we should find the referee um for that that's not fair she's probably fine though she pushed the referee after so she's probably gonna get a fine 
Brock Lesnar's probably going to get a fine, too, because he pushed a referee as well. No, he didn't. He did. He fucking picked up a referee and threw him over the... He threw him into the crowd. That man's crazy. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> Becky Lynch came come out. Yeah, huge pop. Did. Huge pop for Becky Lynch. She's yeah. out for blood when it comes to damage control. Mm-hmm. Great show out for Becky Lynch in the Royal Rumble. That was fun. Bailey eliminates Becky Lynch, uh, but not before Becky eliminates Dakota Kai and Io Sky. That was a, that was a moment where like Bailey was fucking so sad and mad all at once that her teammates were gone. Oh my god! I wish they that whole the four of them were in the Rumble for longer. I feel like we didn't get enough Becky Lynch in the Rumble, which was a bummer. But um, but yeah. Well, we had her. She was fucking great. Per usual. I think Bailey's doing a lot of good stuff with her character. It's fun to see her play around in the ring. But then Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan eliminated Bailey. And she helped Becky Lynch out. And then Becky and Damage Control were fighting each other throughout the whole time, throughout the crowd. And that was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, and then they disappeared and we never saw them again. I wonder if they're still fighting in the arena right now. (laughs) They probably are. While they're cleaning up all the chairs and everything, they're still fighting. Rumor has it. Tegan Knox came out. That was fun. Tegan Knox is always fun to come out. Tegan Knox came out and that's when I realized that this women's Royal Rumble and maybe the entire Royal Rumble pay-per-view was not only sponsored by Mountain Dew, but also neon green because there was a lot of neon green in this Royal Rumble everywhere. So many people had pops of neon green or just full on neon green looks. I mean, Shotzi usually has neon green, so that was to be expected. But yeah, lots of pops of neon green, just green in general, lots of green gear and green embellishments, which I don't hate because I love the color green. Yeah, I like the color green, too. It's good. It was it was good. It was good. Also, going back to Natty's gear, Natty's gear was cute. Natty's gear felt like an ode to her old days when she wore a lot of white. I did not understand the hat uh, that she wore during her entrance. The coat was cool. Uh, the jacket was cool. The glasses were cool, too. But I did not understand it at all. But Natty is Mama Natty, and I love Natty, and I feel like Natty can do no wrong. Natty's like the Facebook mom, where uh, she has her phone with her wallet in her phone, and she's always taking selfies. Natty reminds me of my mom, actually. That's really funny. That's cute. That's nice. Yeah, it's all right. Anyway, um, let's talk about the freak out of Asuka coming out and absolutely blowing our minds. And she comes out, brand new song, rest in peace, CFO, hate to see it. I couldn't hear this new song, so I'm not sure what it was, but she came out and she comes out in this, her usual robe, but she comes out in this like traditional Japanese dragon head, is it? And she straight up looked like Akira Hokuto. Like, she straight up looked like that. Like, that pure 90s AJW Joshi gear. She comes out. She gets to all the way down. She walks all the way down to the, like, right outside the ring. And she takes off the mask. And it's fucking Kana. Mm. It's Kana. She's got the white. She's got the the blue. Her 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 mouth looked like the skin was tearing off with that metallic blue all over her face. Her gear was amazing. Everyone sold it. Everyone was so shocked to see Kana. She probably got one of the biggest pops of the night like one of there were a lot of great pops especially when Cody came out but and Bianca had a good bop too but like it was so great to see Asuka get that pop and get that love and she came out and she executed that so well oh my god I I'm so happy to see her back she's yeah I just had to say that yeah, oh my god, it's fucking, it's, uh, it's like, I saw, we've seen people be like, oh, I feel like this is gonna be where we're gonna get, like, this, this Asuka, this Kana, this, like, this character, and, man, 
actually seeing it and seeing the way that she upgraded it also the fucking haircut too the fucking gear the way that it's all black with the popsicle oh my god she just and you could even tell like the way that she was wrestling was a little bit sharper than she's been lately and she's just like she's not being as cutesy or as silly but she's still like being her like fucking mischievous self oh my god i just she's my favorite she's my fucking number one and i'm so excited to see what they're going to do with her from now on i was really like when this happened i honestly thought that they were going to like make this her reboot back to like undefeated Asuka where she was going to win the rumble go on to challenge Charlotte and um redeem herself from losing her streak to Charlotte you know what I mean which who knows maybe they will do that and we'll still get that this Wrestlemania but I'm still really excited to see um what she does in the future and I'm also like holy shit I cannot wait to fucking draw that that look dude i'm like oh i can't wait i can't wait it's the first thing i'm gonna do once i get my deadline shit done you definitely should be following lauren moran and she's gonna draw the fuck out of this kana look oh man and you're right i absolutely agree like her ring set tonight like it's what she was doing before was great you know she was silly oscar she was having a lot of fun like slapping her ass and shit <laughs> Which is great, you know, like just telling people to kiss her ass and curse them out and tell call them a bitch and like <laughs> in Japanese. It, we would see it come out at times, especially recently, like when she's had interactions with damage control and shit like that. So we've seen her have this like edge kind of come out a little bit. So that's sort of why everybody kind of assumed that like this was who we were getting at Royal Rumble. You know what I mean? So it's nice to see it. Full force. Full force. Full force. Full force. She's not dancing around. She's like a serious Asuka. She has like little hints and elements of her NXT run where she was like super serious during this Royal Rumble. I swear to God, she came out and I was like, nope, that's it. That's my winner. Because that would have been so cool for Asuka to be the two first two time women's Royal Rumble winner. That would have been so sick. And I agree. I think that her going on to face Charlotte at WrestleMania. I think now more than ever, they can do that. Pull the trigger on that rematch because then you can really elevate your women's division and just have Oscar go on to SmackDown. And that would be a really great build up to WrestleMania for Charlotte. Have that rematch. They had a really great match at WrestleMania 34. So I think they can really accomplish that. And it's WrestleMania in Hollywood. It would be a banger of a match. The entrances would be great. And I would have Asuka winning. Mm -hmm. I would have Asuka win. um, Finally get that win, especially as this dark Asuka, Kana Asuka. She was great. She also, I mean, maybe the blue was an Easter egg. The blue in the makeup and the blue mist was like a little Easter egg that she's going to go to SmackDown if they're thinking in 3D chess like that, you know. And it was a metallic blue, too. Yeah, it wasn't just like a royal matte blue. It was a metallic blue. Hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe. Piper Nevin comes out. Great to see her drop the dew drop gimmick and come out. And she was she was dressed as a brave heart and that was cute i really like that brave heart moment tamina came out she looked great i just wish the gear was matching with the uh entrance look of what she came out with but that's okay and then chelsea green came out and that was really the only under wraps surprise well that was one of in the women's royal rumble we'll get to that in a bit but she comes out talks a lot of smack and um then she she was uh, uh, eliminated um and and that was that and she she was gone but she's back she's back which is great that's good for her i'm excited to see what she's gonna do in the future you know what i mean i'm excited to see who she might have a feud with i'd love to see her face um i don't know that's what's exciting is to see who she's gonna face in the future i bet her and carmella could have some fun matches and some fun even them teaming up together i bet they'd be a fun like 
um, frenemies kind of team where they pretend to like each other, but they actually fucking hate each other. And like they do backstage segments where they're talking shit about each other. And then they're like, oh, I love you so much. Kind of like a housewives kind of thing. You know what I mean? I hope that she gets lucky this time because I think it was her NXT run. She got injured when she moved up to the main roster. She got injured and then she was released and she really never had a chance to cement her feet or like at least ground her feet into the main roster. So hopefully, you know, this is a change she made. She made a statement with her um, grand opening, grand closing. Good job, Chelsea. <laughs> then moving on, we got Selena Vega. Selena Vega was dressed as a Street Fighter character, and she's the new spokesperson for the new Street Fighter game. That was cool. Selena looked really great. You li- you really liked her gear. I loved it. I loved the way that it moved in the ring. I loved the way she looked in it. Like it was really well designed too. The way that it was sort of like a bodysuit that had like the black accents on it with the baggy pieces over it. And the hair was really cute. And it gave me like, I don't know, it looked like a different take on Spider Gwen almost, but that's mainly because of the colors. But yeah, it was a really cute outfit and she did some really sick hurricane run it like she had a good night tonight she had some really fun spots she did some good flippy shit which i always love and she always looks good and she sells shit really well too and she had some really good like oh, oh is she gonna be eliminated kind of moments but she held on really well she's always good i love selena vega she's solid. yeah selena vega's good i want to see her wrestle more you know yeah. i want to see her wrestle beyond just the Royal Rumble and a Queen of the Ring tournament. That's my fellow Queen of the Ring. Yeah. Yeah. It is. What was the crown, Queen, Crown Queen? What was the name of it? I don't know, but they didn't take my name. Woo. Safe for another year, Hell folks. Yeah. There we go. There <laughs> They're we not go. taking the name from me this time. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to jinx it for, for me this year. But thank God I got the change name to... Alex Lajas. Anyway, uh, <laughs> knock, on knock on wood. Thank you. Uh, next was Raquel Rodriguez. She got a she got a good pop. She got a real big pop, and she whooped some ass too. She was in it for she was in the final four. That's pretty good. Pretty fucking good. Yeah, and she got pops the whole night too. She was great. She looked good. She looked strong. I liked I liked her appearance. The one thing I will say about the gear. So Raquel Rodriguez, beautiful, gorgeous smile, great back. Her muscles look great. Beautiful woman. The gear, this was a struggle bus for me to understand the references. So the flames were Eddie Guerrero, which was great. Immediately caught that because I saw the boots. I saw the flames. I was like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Because she is Mexican. So uh, pulled it off. Great. And I think she might be from Texas. I think they mentioned that in on commentary. So that was great. Lots of representation there. You know, love to see it. And then it went up to the top and it was red. And that's when it was taking me a while to understand why it went from the Eddie reference to this red number. And it took me so long to understand that it was Selena because they were in Texas and Selena's from Texas, also Mexican. And I was like, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, one or the other. Or done differently. Like, the way that the pants were fitted didn't match with the way that the top was fitted. And the whole thing kind of felt a little long. The fit of the pants and the fit of the top were just too different. They didn't, like, go together. And the torso felt a little long. Again, like you said, I liked the two different elements separately, but together they just didn't work. And maybe there could have been a way to make them work better, but that wasn't it yeah it just wasn't it i think they that she should have picked one or the other it it was fun like i would have really loved a selena moment especially with the red that she chose to wear because a lot of people reference the purple outfit that she had i believe at the alamo dome when she performed and i also get the reference that she would wear selena because of it i think because of she performed in the alamo dome if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on that. Selena performed there. Like in the beginning of the Selena movie, yeah, yeah. 
that's where she's performing and she's wearing that purple number and everyone references that purple number which is great but that red number that she that selena wears is great it would have been great if it was just that and not the eddie but the eddie is always a good reference too but the selena i think would have been better for this appearance in this royal rumble and then she can save eddie for wrestlemania even though peyton royce from the iconics did do that at wrestlemania 35 when they won the tag team titles but i think she should chose one or the other didn't sasha do a tribute to that gear as well I don't remember if Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet, sorry. Um, I don't remember if she ref, she did that specific gear where it was the black and the purple and blue flames. But she did do the red gear with the boots from, I want to say it was when Eddie Guerrero won the championship against Brock Lesnar. If I am wrong, please correct me. But I believe that was it at WrestleMania 32 when it was her and Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch in the triple threat. And that's when they switched the Divas title to the Raw championship. So she that's where she wore that. And then she wore the boots. So then we got Mia Yim, Lacey Evans, Snooze. Just Lacey Evans, really, the Snooze. Mia Yim looked great she was fun to watch in the ring she was. she was a lot of fun to watch uh then michelle mccool comes out from relaxing on in the front row with her daughter and she <laughs> i watched a playback on twitter she like tossed not tossed but she like threw her phone at her daughter not like in a bad way it wasn't like that but it was like in a playful like hold my shit kind of way and took off her jacket and her daughter like helps her take off the jacket it was so fun to see that girl she's probably gonna go into wrestling because yeah that's the undertaker's daughter i mean i mean if your dad's the undertaker and your mom is michelle mccool like you should maybe test the waters you might have a gift for it you know what i mean because man michelle mccool fucking does a style clash better than aj styles she is so smooth with it she nails it so well oh my god she is a pleasure to watch in the ring and she did it in uggs didn't she like she fucking she was like i guess i'll wrestle i just wanted to have a good time tonight and watch wrestle not wrestlemania my bad watch the royal watch rumble. the royal rumble and um and yeah she did great i was i wish she was in it longer i say that for everybody though i wish they could all be in it forever <laughs> yeah i wish the royal rumble could go on forever but yeah she jumped over the barricade in her Uggs, she looks like uh, a dance instructor that I had in college. Like, she had the baggy, like, yoga pants almost. She, if there's, if there's something, if there's one thing that Michelle McCool is going to do, she's going to rock the Christian cross all over her pants, just a normal black top. She looked great. She entered the ring. She, like, jumped over the barricade, attacked Tamina, got into the ring. She's she's so great to see at a Royal Rumble. She really is. Because she got the most eliminations during the first Royal Rumble. And she's just such a pleasure to watch in the ring. Yeah. I, uh, I'm such a fan. I'm always excited when she pops in. It would be cool if she came back and she did a run. She seems like she has, like enough that she could do a mini legends run you know what i mean enough of the enough of the guys do it why not her <laughs> yeah enough of the enough of the fellas doing it oh, oh, oh. Well, bring in the ladies am i right ladies bring in the lady legends oh when you know it's good it's good <laughs> trying to do an alaska may west <laughs> i'm trying to think of the name of that um that show on HBO about the Christian family that has like the televangelist show, um, oh, and um, and um, righteous gems, righteous gems. She her gear is always like a fucking mom on the righteous gems. You know what I mean? Like she just seems like a character that would go to the churches and be at the fucking meetings and shit. Yeah. You know, especially the way she does her hair and everything. Anyway. <laughs> 
She does. Righteous gemstones. Yes, that's okay. Righteous <laughs> gemstones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Righteous gems. We got there together. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Michelle McCool, love her. Would love to see her in a Legends run, though. Seriously, yes. get her in there. But I loved when she did hit the Styles Clash. That's the McCool Clash. Like, let's just rename it because she, yeah. he, like, low key does that better than AJ Styles. And I love that Michael Cole referenced that as well. He yes. he said phenomenal, and I was like, you go, Michael Cole. I love you, Michael Cole. I love that he does that. He's great. He's great. We love Michael Cole. We love Michael Cole in this house. And we love Michelle McCool doing that move better than AJ Styles. And I'm saying that with my whole chest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can discord about it on wrestling Twitter and we'll fucking mute you anyway. I'm not on Twitter. Oh, well, they'll <laughs> fucking, they'll, you know. Don't find me. <laughs> Got to delete the app for a few fucking Stay weeks sometimes. But that's all right. It clears your mind. Anyway, uh, this is where it gets funny, fuzzy for me because I was still hooked on Kana coming through and Michelle McCool. Uh, Sh- Sonia Deville comes out. Mm-hmm. Sure, her gear looked like Spy versus Spy. It did. You are absolutely right. It did look like Spy versus Spy. It did. It did. Shotzi came out. Your mom came out. I love Shotzi. I'm glad she rode the tank. I wish the tank went. Oh, I wish she rode the tank into the ring and eliminated everybody with the tank. <laughs> that would have been ridiculous. But yeah, I love Shotzi. She shoots like shirts into the ring and it hits like Liv Morgan in the eye. Hell yeah. <laughs> Nikki Cross came out. She looks like she's sanity is back. And even again, Michael Cole referenced that as well yeah. and said that, oh, sanity. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's what Michael Cole said. Exact words. Crossing character, like an animal crossing character. <laughs> That's what animal crossing Michael Cole sounds like. Yeah. Then uh, I don't know who came out in number 29. I don't know. Again, fuzzy. I lost count on my notes i'm so sorry i could look it up but um my brain's not cooperating in like a smart way but nia Jax comes out at number 30 no it was probably the biggest like her and logan paul are equal for the biggest fucking disappointments of the night like truly what the fuck are you doing back what the fuck are you doing here please nobody missed you not a single fucking person missed you. And they used that as a bit. They used it as a bit that nobody likes you. Let's make let's make sure everybody's like, no, collectively, fuck this woman. We want her out of the ring right now. Like, they made that a bit of how much of a piece of shit everybody thinks you are. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, Am I, I mean... wrong? <laughs> Am I wrong? <laughs> I mean, they botched her entrance, so I think that says something, because her music hit, and everyone in the ring looked confused, and then the clock showed up, and it was like 10, 9, but the music already hit, surprise was ruined, Nia Jax came out at number 30, she's back, I mean, she's ba- she has a shirt, like, they released a shirt, so she's back, you know, yeah. she's there, so... Uh, there's that but um, yeah she came in in the ring and everyone was threatened and everyone was shocked that she came back and she enters the ring and she starts yelling at everybody and everyone's just like circling her and then everyone attacks her and she does the usual like and she breaks up breaks away I don't I don't like that spot they do they used to do it so much in 2018 especially with her I just don't like that spot. I just think that spot is not creative and it, it just doesn't do anything other than adrenaline in nobody's soul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just it's it's expected and it's kind of like I don't know. Let's do one spot to make her look strong and then that's I I don't remember another fucking thing that she did. I remember I remember that and I remember when everybody eliminated her and maybe I'm just darkening it out of my mind because she 
I don't like her, but I don't know. It was weird. It was a weird choice. And nobody was excited to see her in the arena either. Like, she didn't... It was one of those things where nobody reacted poorly. Nobody reacted excited. Everyone was just kind of like, oh, oh, okay. Sure. Why not? Yeah, like, it was just like, okay, thanks. Anyway, she's eliminated. Um, So, it was what it was. It was an appearance. So, it is, yeah, anticlimactic for me. Um... And overall, like both Royal Rumbles, it was not giving with the surprises. It was very lackluster. And that's why I tune in for the Royal Rumble. Like I tune in for the surprises. I tune in for like who's coming out. Like give me one legend, you know, to come out. I mean, Rey Mysterio is a legend, but he didn't even come out, you know. So that's. Beth Phoenix was there. Why didn't she make a Royal Rumble appearance? And that would have been cool because that would have also elevated the story of Rhea Ripley. I mean, she is number one in the Royal Rumble. So for Beth Phoenix to come out and then continue that feud with Rhea Ripley, that was upsetting. But yeah, yeah, there was no surprise. And like that, that makes that just makes me sad. Like, let's face it. Cody Rhodes should have been the ultimate surprise. Because, you know, although he was he didn't have a long run when he first appeared in WWE, he was a missing piece for a while because yeah. we want to see him in WWE like he came back home, you know, so think about his WrestleMania su- surprise. Everybody knew it was coming, but it was still fucking like a cool surprise that he was the one that showed up. You know what I mean? And I guess Chelsea Green was a surprise and like Nia Jax was supposed to be a surprise, but like... I don't know. I also I also wish that um, we got more of a fight at the end. Like the final three was really fucking cool. But I would have loved for Asuka and Rhea to go at it the way that Cody and Gunther went at it. Because especially this Asuka, I want to see her beat the shit out of Rhea Ripley. Like I wish she got a chance to like at least look strong a little bit more tonight as opposed to just like the three of them having a little spat on the on the on the apron and then having the elimination just be like ah sprayed the face okay now i'm gonna push you (laughs) you know what i mean like i would respectfully disagree with that only because i see the i see where you're where you're heading because of course, like you love Oscar, yeah. and I agree too. Like I love Oscar, and I would like her to have more brutality, which no pun intended, because that's Rhea Ripley's <laughs> deal. But I would have loved that a little bit more with Oscar, especially with this new dark look. But in my eyes, I thought first of all, I thought that was the best uh, final elimination. In all of like so far of what we've seen of the women's Royal Rumble. I think I think that was the best because you have Liv Morgan who Liv Morgan in my head was never a prediction for me to win the women's Royal Rumble. But since she came out in number two and she made it to the final three, like I was like, holy shit, like if Liv Morgan wins, I wouldn't be mad at that either because that would be a really great win for her. And very well could have been that moment. It could have been any of them. Okay, yeah, I see. I see where you're going. And so then with Asuka, I mean, when Asuka came out in that, like, that was a huge moment. Like, that is, like, top three for me tonight, hands down. It was definitely Cody, everything that happened in the main event, which we'll get to in a second, Mm -hmm. of course. But Kana coming out was a cultural reset for me. Like, that was really, truly amazing. So, in my eyes, I felt like it was, like, a taste of Kana in the Royal Rumble. Because I really want Kana to be built up, like, a legitimate threat in the main roster. And since Rhea Ripley did win because they were in the apron and Asuka missed it, missed Liv Morgan, she took it. Which, by the way, Liv sold the fuck out of that. Especially towards the end when Kana was eliminated, uh, Rhea Ripley eliminated Kana, 
and Kana was yeah, yeah, yeah. and then Kana uh sorry Rhea Ripley was holding on because her feet was dangling and she was holding on to the ropes so then Liv Morgan's like she can't see so she's reaching for that was really really great that was like acting that was a cinematic that like elevated the element and also all three of them would have been a great choice like out of nowhere Liv Morgan out of nowhere Kana Mm -hmm. because when Kana came in it like I said sold I thought that she was going to win the Royal Rumble and then Rhea Ripley who everyone predicted and she came out in number one too those three women were in my eyes in that moment was like oh shit anybody can get this and anybody that gets this would still be a really great win so the stakes were high and especially going into this Royal Rumble the women's Royal Rumble was unpredictable I think like the majority was Rhea Ripley but anybody in the cards would have been great too but yeah when they were in uh on the apron like that was that was some really great stuff that was a lot of fun to see uh Rhea Ripley scissor elimination when she eliminated Kana that was a lot of fun yeah and then or no 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 that was Liv Morgan I think that elimination that final one was great Rhea Ripley wins and I think we're going to see her go after Bianca Belair. I'd love to see her pick Bianca Belair. I think they need a moment. That's a really great moment, especially for NXT. And Ray Ripley during the press conference after the Royal Rumble was pushing over NXT and was giving NXT high praise and talking about how the women that showed up in the Royal Rumble, like Roxana Perez being NXT champion was a special moment. She also said that she wanted to see more men in the Royal Rumble from NXT and said that the men's Royal Rumble is, you know, something to watch out for, which was good. But Rhea Ripley versus Bianca Belair, that would be great. They have a long history together because Rhea Ripley was NXT champion, but now the tables have turned. So, Lauren, what would you rate this match? I think for me, 8 out of 10. Yeah, I would say the same. 8 out of 10. Um, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. It was better than the men's. Ooh. It was. It was. Yeah. Yeah. They were close for me. I think they were close. But yeah, the women's the women's uh, skirted over a little bit more for me. Yeah, it was good. Now, the main event. Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens. The bloodline. Kevin Owens comes out. Roman Reigns comes out with Sami Zayn. He leaves the Usos. And Solo behind. Huey, Dewey, and Louis stay behind. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> and, gotta take care of business. <laughs> and that Roman and Kevin Owens fight was, it was brutal. The story with the bloodline, a masterpiece. Like, it's probably one of the greatest storylines in this decade of WWE. And probably in the last... 20 years even everyone is such is in such a good position like everyone is a good piece in the in the puzzle and it starts with sammy uso chance roman reigns scared me a few times i didn't like it when kevin owens hit his head so hard and kevin owens beat the shit out of him too like they really fucking they went crazy kevin owens kevin owens is i love kevin owens Big fan, big fan of that guy. It was it was hard to watch at times. Kevin Owens called Roman a manipulator and was yelling at him. I mean, the story with Kevin Owens is Kevin Owens is just trying to say uh, save Sami Zayn from this bloodline cult. That's really what it is. The bloodline is the Scientology of WWE. Sami Zayn is just locked in. He's holding the two metal cans that they make people hold especially in the Times square train station tables out a few people would get that reference it's okay yeah. the match itself i would rate it a 10 out of 10 i would say the same thing it was really like top to bottom it was really well done the whole thing the match was really good the way everything was handled afterwards was done really well it was fucking great it's a crazy story and it's a really good story man it's hard to watch roman get betrayed again but this time he fucking kind of had it coming he did he did have it coming roman reigns won with the spear and then the usos handcuffed kevin owens into onto the ropes and then they get a chair and roman was about to hit kevin owens with the chair and then he gave Sami Zayn the chair no, and Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn. 
stopped him. Since- oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, my God. There was so much happening. Also, it's three o'clock in the morning. Forgive us. Yes, it's three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> this is fun. So then, <laughs> yes, Roman was about to hit Kevin Owens. And then Sammy took the chair away from him. Thank you for reminding me. And that was dramatic. And then Roman was like encouraging him to hit Kevin Owens. And he couldn't hit Kevin Owens, his best friend. So then he hits his cult leader, Roman Reigns. A callback to Seth Rollins breaking up the shield. He had it coming. See, this time. He had it coming. Exactly. (laughs) He was the cult leader this time, but Triple H was a cult leader the last time. He was being betrayed by a friend joining a cult. And this time he's the cult leader that was betrayed by his leaving member i'm like you kind of feel bad for him but also what the fuck you're sounding crazy you're sounding crazy man what did kevin owens ever do to you this is wrestling somebody's gonna try and come for your title sometime i mean it was a test to ro- to sammy Zayn if he was loyal to the bloodline and go after his best friend they were brutally beating up sammy Zayn for portraying the bloodline and hitting Roman Reigns. And Jay Uso just rolls out of the ring and walks to the back and he's crying. A cinematic performance. Nominate him for the Oscars. Is it too late? The bloodline stuff needs to be nominated for an Emmy because it's just great TV. Jay Uso walks to the back and he's crying. He's just delivering the moment. And It was fun, but I thought something else should have happened. Like, I thought maybe something like it was it went a little long, you know, it went a little over. But I thought something else was going to come out. Maybe a a Dwayne would come out and control your fucking bloodline. Roman's Roman's reign is getting a little out of control now. He seems to be um, seems to be getting to his head. He's getting a little Jim Jonesy up in here and he's got to he's got to be. He's got to be, somebody's got to tell him, you're sounding like a crazy person. You can't just handcuff people in a ring. You can't just ask Paul Heyman to consistently have not one, but two sets of handcuffs on hand at all times. You, there's got to be a line in the sand at some point. You know what I mean? Somebody's got to say to him, hey man, I think this is going to your head a little bit. I think you got to reel it in. And Sami Zayn tried to do that. He tried to talk him off the ledge and then Roman said, fuck you, man. No, you got to hate your friend. And Sammy said, no, friend, I got to hate you. And then Roman got fuck you chance. And it was the probably the first time where he deserved it. Mm -hmm. And it was great, great, a great way to end out the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, 10 out of 10 segment. It was phenomenal. It was great. Can't wait to see it all play out now. What is going to happen with Cody and Rhea Ripley? Who are they going to choose to face off with at WrestleMania? And we are officially on the road to WrestleMania. We made our first pit stop and now we're continuing on. But we're not going to continue on with this podcast because it is three in the morning and we are done with this review. It was a fun show. Overall, the show, I would rate it uh, eight out of ten. I think I think so. Bloodline really carried that. So, yeah, I agree. And even all the matches, none of them were boring. I had a good time watching all of them. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Well, Lauren Moran, thank you so much for joining me for this first in person live with a guest queen of the ring podcast thank you for joining me tell the people all about your patreon and where they can follow you and look at all of your amazing cool art and you should follow her because she is wonderful and you know not for nothing but if you own a wrestling shirt she probably drew it she probably came up with the graphic it is her art on your chest (laughs) my name everywhere Lauren Moran, L A U R E N M O R A N. Um, my Patreon, patreon.com plus Lauren Moran. I do postcards and stickers and stuff. It's cool. There's some cool stuff on there if you like to look at art. Don't at me on Twitter about anything ever. 
That's a great way to end off the podcast, y'all. That is a fantastic way to end off the podcast. Um, uh, thank you so much for listening. Of course, you can follow me at Queen of the Ring with two G's on Twitter, Queen of the Ring mostly everywhere else, underscore with the Instagram, because that person, uh, some someone still owns Queen of the Ring. I follow them, which is kind of creepy, but I kind of follow them. Can, like, give me my name, but it's fine. She had it first, so I don't know. We'll see. And thank you for joining me to watch the Royal Rumble with me. It was a pleasure watching a pay per view with you. It's yeah, it was a lot of fun. It's always like this is what we do. Back in the day before COVID, we would always spend time watch watch pay per views together, and now we do it in an undisclosed location, burping away. Yeah. All right, that's about it. That's it. Thank you guys. Bye.